Okay, so um, this morning I'm just going to talk about some um, AS uh, chemistry enthalpy calculations which are part of um, the developing fuels unit. I'm not going to talk about all of them, but ones that we'll be doing in the coming week which are based on um, the experiment that we did uh, last week which was looking at measuring the enthalpy of combustion of a fuel. So we're going to use enthalpy of combustion to work out enthalpy changes for other reactions and we're going to use something called an enthalpy change of formation to work out um, the enthalpy change for any reaction in principle. So I'm just going to put the uh, board on. So um, what we're going to be doing is based on a law that we'll meet this week called Hess's law. And uh, this bloke called Hess came to the conclusion that if you take a reaction where something reacts with something else, or any chemical reaction really, but in this case we've got A plus B going to C plus D, I'm calling that delta H1, so that's the enthalpy change associated with this reaction here. If we go another way from A plus B to C plus D, so for example we turn A and B into E and F first, and we've also got a reaction where we can turn C and D into E and F. Okay. What Hess basically said is the energy change going from A plus B to C plus D is exactly the same as the energy change going to E plus F and then to C plus D. So basically the overall energy change is independent of the route taken. It doesn't matter how many steps you have as long as you end, start and end at the same point. So in this particular example, delta H1 there is equal to going from A plus B to E plus F. So that's um, uh, delta H2. And because in this particular example, I've said the reaction that we know is C plus D going to E plus F. So that's going this way. We've got to go the other way. So that's minus delta H3. So if you can measure these two enthalpy changes here, you can calculate what delta H1 is, even if you can't measure delta H1 directly. So let's just take an example of how that works, and uh, that's this reaction over here. So what we're going to use is enthalpy changes of combustion, which you'll have measured in a lesson by burning some methanol and some hexane and working out what their enthalpies of combustion are. And we're going to use those sorts of values to work out the enthalpy change of this reaction here. So we've got carbon reacting with hydrogen to make methane directly. Now this, this reaction in a lab you can't practically do and you certainly can't measure the enthalpy change um, directly. So I'm going to call this here delta HR. So we're going to look to measure and work out what that value is. We can't measure it directly. But what we can do is we can burn methane using a Bunsen burner, we can measure how much energy is given out. So there is a reaction we can do that will go down to combustion products of methane are uh, carbon dioxide and water. And to do that we need to add some oxygen of course, so add O2. And because we've got four hydrogens here, we're going to make uh, two molecules of water there. And because we've got two oxygens there and two there, that's four oxygens, so we're going to need uh, two oxygens over there. So that's delta HC for methane. Okay, going from there to there. The thing is, we can burn carbon and we can also burn hydrogen. We can measure their enthalpies of combustion as well by doing an experiment. So we can go that way. So we're going to burn some carbon to make carbon dioxide, so that's delta HC for carbon. Um, but we're also going to burn the hydrogen, and because we're burning two lots of hydrogen to get two lots of water here, that's two times the enthalpy of combustion of hydrogen. And of course, we need the two molecules of oxygen over here as well. Okay, so we can do the same thing as we've done over here. We can actually say, actually, to go from there to there, so delta H R is going to be exactly the same as going from here to here. So we go to the combustion products of carbon and hydrogen, 
and then we bung them back together to make methane. So delta H R in this case is going to be equal to delta H C of carbon plus delta H C of uh, hydrogen, but we need two lots of those, so there's two in there. And because we're going in the opposite direction to the uh, enthalpy change of combustion of methane, we're actually making the methane rather than burning it, as it were, we're going in the opposite direction. And when you do that, you change the sign. So it's minus delta HC CH4. So we can actually measure this, uh, calculate this enthalpy change here without actually ever doing the uh, reaction, but we can burn these things here. So um, to give you some values, delta HC of methane is uh, minus 882 kilojoules per mole. Um, remember, enthalpies of combustion are always negative. They're exothermic. They're releasing energy to the surroundings, so the uh, reagents are actually losing energy. Water is minus 286. Just put some ditto marks in there for the units. As you're writing them out again. And for uh, what else have we got? Carbon is minus three something. Uh, I did look it up. 393. Three. I keep remote forgetting that one. 393 kilojoules per mole. So if you put those values into this calculation here, so the carbon is what? Minus 393 plus 2 times minus 286 minus, I've got a minus, you've got to be careful with our minus signs here, 8, 8, 2. So that's actually going to become a positive, a minus of a minus, and these things here are negative. So if you add it all up together, being careful with your signs, uh, that gets you, I think, minus 83 kilojoules per mole. So what we've done there is work out the enthalpy change of this particular reaction, which happens to be the enthalpy change of formation of methane. We'll come on to that in a minute. Um, it's not an enthalpy change we can measure directly. However, we can calculate it by looking at enthalpy changes that we can measure by doing an experiment. Okay, so that's, that's one type of reaction um, calculation that you'd be expected to do. Another type, let's sort of box that off a bit. Another type is um, using what we call enthalpy changes of formation. An enthalpy change of formation is uh, defined as when one mole of a compound is formed from its elements in their standard state at standard conditions. So actually what we're doing here is making a mole of methane from its elements in its standard state. So we've actually worked out an enthalpy change of formation here for methane using enthalpy changes of combustion. But once you've got enthalpy changes of formation for com compounds, you can use them to work out enthalpy changes of lots of different reactions. So that's what we're going to try and do here with one simple example. So we're going to use delta HF to find uh, delta HR. So the reaction that I've chosen this morning to look at is the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. So calcium carbonate, or limestone, chalk, those sorts of things, you can heat it up and it'll decompose, and it's an important reaction in the sort of formation of cement and concrete and stuff like that. And it decomposes to give you calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now this reaction is endothermic. You've got to put thermal energy into it. And you can't measure the enthalpy change of an endothermic reaction directly because you're actually having to supply it with energy um, so measuring how much energy is going into the calcium carbonate rather than, say, the surroundings and things is pretty much impossible to do. However, what we can do is think, well, okay, what elements have we got in calcium carbonate? Well, what have we got there? We've got a calcium, we've got a carbon, 
and we've got oxygen. Now, oxygen standard state is O2. And we've got three oxygens over there, so we actually need one and a half oxygens. Um, carbon standard state is solid. Calcium is graphite, to be precise. And calcium is solid. Okay. So what we can do is actually turn those into calcium carbonate. So if we were to make one mole of calcium carbonate from these elements in their standard state, that would be the enthalpy change of formation of calcium carbonate. So we're going to work out delta H R there, and that is delta H F for formation of calcium carbonate. Going this way, we can make a mole of calcium oxide. So we're going to make one mole of calcium oxide from its elements in their standard state. So we've got those here. We've got calcium and we've got some oxygen. But we're also going to make carbon dioxide. We're going to make one mole of carbon dioxide from its elements in their standard state. So we've got carbon here and we've got oxygen here. So this is delta H F. Uh, we'll do calcium oxide first. CaO plus delta H H. FCO2. Okay. Um, so if we just oh, my headphones on. Um, so if we um, do a little calculation, actually I'll put the values up here first of all. I'll look these up. Delta H F of uh, calcium carbonate equals, what's calcium carbonate? That's uh, minus 1207 kilojoules per mole minus 1. And uh, delta rich formation of calcium oxide is minus 258. You can look these up online, or you'll find them in your data sheets. Have you got your data sheets? Cal uh, carbon dioxide is minus three nine three. Okay. So all we need to do is sort of put those into an equation we can get from this. So delta H R is going to be equal to we're going to go around this way. Okay, so Hess's law says going around that way is the same as going this way. But because we're going in the opposite direction of this arrow here, we're actually going in the opposite direction of the enthalpy change of formation. It's minus delta H F C A C O three plus so we're going to add on the enthalpy change of formation of calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. So Delta H F C A O plus Delta H F C O two. So we're adding those two on because we're going in the same direction as the arrow, the same direction as the enthalpy change of formation. So if we put numbers in, that's um, uh, calcium carbonate is minus minus. 1207. So that's going to become positive plus minus calcium carb oxide is minus 258 minus 393. And if you bung that all in together, this bit's going to become positive. So that's going to be the biggest bit. This bit here is negative. Um, so that comes to be 55 plus. Five, five, six kilojoules per mole minus one. So that's um, basically all there is to it. So you can use this method here to, in theory, assuming you know the enthalpy change of formation of all the reactants and all the products, you can work out the enthalpy change of reaction for any reaction because it's really just the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of the products subtract 
the sum of the enthalpy changes of formation of um, the reactants. Okay, so basically we've added these two things together here and taken away this one, and you'll get the answer. Now these are two common calculations using enthalpy changes of combustion to work out an enthalpy change of reaction, and using the enthalpy change of formation to calculate an enthalpy change of reaction. In this case, this one's endothermic, so we're going uphill. So you have to heat the calcium carbonate to get anything happening. So these are applications of Hess's law, and we'll be doing and covering these things in the uh, Year 12 lessons um, this coming week. Okay, so that's about it, really. Uh, there are other enthalpy changes that you're uh, expected to know about, enthalpy change calculations. One's using bond enthalpies, but we'll deal with those at um, another time. But that's maybe something that you can uh, look back at. Okay, thanks for watching.